What's up guys, welcome back to Outdoors Maryland. Today we are in Perth State Park, but there's no parking lot, so it says Nanjamoy Wildlife Management Area here. And today we're gonna to be looking for uh, fossilized shark teeth along the Potomac River. Um, at this spot, you can find uh, fossilized shark teeth, uh, Native American artifacts, colonial era artifacts, and pottery shards. So we're gonna be on the lookout for those. It's low tide, so we're gonna go head down to the beach. So when you get here, this is what the trailhead to the beach will look like. It's just down from the parking lot. Um, you just gotta step around. Step around the gate, careful of some thorns. And then it's about a half mile walk down to the beach. Down to the beach. So before we get to searching, it looks like there's a lot of other people searching here today. I'm gonna show you why all these fossils are here. If you see all these sediments, these sort of mini cliffs, they're about eight feet tall. Um, millions of years ago, the river would have been up over here. And as sand and sediment fell, all the dead animals were trapped in the sediment. And the only thing that remain are their teeth. And I tend to find more teeth when you have areas like this. You can see all the shells are still trapped in here. And all the, uh, all the teeth and all the stuff that we're looking for erodes out of here. Especially when the tides come up. Um, so we're going to get the looking. I generally don't find any around the mouth of the trail. Because that's where the most people are searching. But um, we'll get started here in a second. First shark tooth finds of the day. We got one of the spear part, one of the base, and one tiny intact guy. These ones are all really small. We're looking for a little bigger than this, but uh, it's good to find them. Just trailhead's literally right there, so I didn't walk too far. All three of these are right next to each other. It's been about five minutes, and I found two of the larger ones so far. Still not considered large, but the largest one so far. I think I found about seven or eight just in the first like five minutes. So today we're looking for bigger ones, like right here. This is a curved guy too. It's a little bit bigger. There are two very small teeth in this shot. Can you see them? These are probably the smallest I've ever found. One right here. That only about as big as fingernail maybe. And the other I might have just covered up when I picked up that one. There he is. That's how tiny these guys are. You just got to get an eye for them. There's a good chipped one right there. That's probably our best hole find right there. I only find black ones here, but there are some harder to spot brown ones. Those ones are kind of after because they tend to be bigger. Okay, so I've walked down the beach a fair ways just trying to get away from people. Everyone seems to be searching right now. So hopefully not too many people have looked here as well as uh, this is some of the tallest cliff the park has to offer. There's a huge spider on my finger right now. Um, along these washed up logs, like right under the crease, is also a good place to look because uh, when the tide rises up here, I can't wash the teeth out. Like, see, there's the base of one right there. And um, here's one right here. Long guy, long and thin. Here's a better example of one of those ray plates. You can see it, it's grooved right along in there. And then on the back side, it's usually just smooth. Yeah, just smooth. Um, this is a pretty decent sized guy. Obviously, since they're so long, they're always broken, but this is a good intact one, so we'll keep it. Now, this is a cool find, a little rarer than a shark's teeth. They're sort of these cork screws. Um, they come in all sorts of sizes. I've seen ones as big as my hand and ones as tiny as a fingernail. And uh, These are in the middle size. A little harder to find than the shark's teeth. They, uh, I forget what they're called, but they came from some worm-like animal extinct now that uh, had these shells. And I found them within 10 feet of each other, which means that there's probably a deposit of them somewhere up in this cliff. Okay, so this is the perfect area. This is all just fine gravel. You can see this is where the tide comes up and it's all blocked by a tangle of tree branches. So uh, teeth that come up here are less likely to be swept out by the low tide and they're just deposited by the high tide. So just glancing over this area right here, right in front of me, found that many. They're all tiny, but still. So I just found this really cool piece of beach glass. It looks like it's the bottom of, of a bottle because it has everything that's imprinted on it. 
the top up here, I think it says law forbids sale or something like that. Maybe like individual sale. This stuff, is, there's an I in a circle. And then it says liquor bottle. Uh, D126, 5527. It looks like 75. So I don't know if that's 1975, maybe 1875. Who knows? And then on the bottom, it says reuse this bottle. It's a really unique piece, so I'm going to keep this. So we just wrapped up our day here at Purse Creek. Here's all of our finds. There are 94 shark's teeth in all uh, out of the three. These are my favorite, they're the biggest. And this one on the far right has a little bit of red in it, which is kind of interesting. Um, found some larger ones in the past, but still all smalls. We found one brown. Browns are a little rare. Yeah, right here, this tiny guy. Oh, there he is, there he is. That guy's a brown. Here are the best uh, Stingray Crusher plates plastic shoe, some beach glass. This one was interesting because it's like the bottleneck, so I kept it, whatever that is. Um, and some of those spiral shells I mentioned earlier and our piece of glass. We can probably read a little better now. That was his liquor bottle, D126, 73 instead of 75. Reuse this bottle. Some cool stuff today. I'm walking back to the car. There's a broad headed skink on that tree stump right there. You see him, there he goes. It's kind of cool how you can uh, be down on the beach and listen to the water and the waves and screaming kids and boats. And then you come up here just on top of the cliff and it's just peaceful upland forest. But anyway, I'm going to tell you guys some tips about how to find all these fossils and all this sort of cool stuff. Um, so the fossils, you're not just going to find at any beach. Um, you can find shark teeth at just, at just about any beach, but these fossils are here because the Potomac River is lined with sedimentary cliffs that erode at high tide. And that releases fossils, and especially these teeth, into the water. And the tides bring them up and down the beach, up and down the river. Many people in Maryland are familiar with Calvert Cliffs State Park, and you can find cooler, bigger fossils there, but you're never going to find 94 teeth like I did today. Um, it's just less beach to search, less fossils in the area, and uh, more people searching for them. Plus, these fossils are actually many, many millions of years older than the ones found at Calvert Cliffs. So, in some ways, I think that's cooler. Um, I've only ever found these small, sharp, narrow black ones here. Um, there are some other shapes that I've seen my friends find, um, but this seems to be the predominant type, especially the small ones. Just down river here at the mouth of the Port Tobacco River, or that lets out into the Potomac. Um, I've searched for teeth on private property there and found only about like four to five per trip, but they're, they're really big, they're really cool. Tips, go to the gravel at the tide lines where it's sort of bunched up and just start combing through it with your hands. Um, there's really no skill to this. It's really just, you'll develop an eye for it eventually. Um, they can be hard to spot at first, so don't get frustrated. Um, whenever you're coming to these beaches, always check the tides before you come. It is currently 245, high, low tide was at uh, 120. A lot of these Potomac River beaches at high tide, the water goes right up to the cliff, so you really can't even search. Um, Potomac River is usually muddy anyway, so it's not like you can see through the water. So I would suggest coming here about an hour, hour and a half before low tide, and then you can search until about like two hours um, after low tide. But a high tide, you can't really come here. There's a bee in my hair. Um, anything else? It tends to be better when you're when there's a cliff to your back. Some of the areas have marshes um, where the cliffs sort of dip down into a bottom marsh and then come back up. Always be searching with a cliff to your back, especially ones where you can see the little shells in the cliff. Um, and that brings me to my final point. It is illegal to take anything out of the cliff. You can only keep things that you find on the beach. 
Um, these cliffs are a natural resource that are disappearing quickly and they protect forests like the one I'm walking through right now. Um, and they, and so we don't want to be damaging those cliffs and making them erode faster than they already are. Um, I know it gets kind of repetitive finding 94 of like the same tooth over and over again, but I don't really find it boring because there's always the chance that I'll find a big one. I found three ones that I consider big today out of the 94. Um, but you know, I could always find a megalodon tooth or one of the other shapes that my friends have found. St still really looking for one of those. Um, and also I found 94. I'm sure for every one tooth I found, I probably walked over five more. You could spend days combing this beach and only do a little fraction of it. So it's just a really cool thing to have. I mean, I just think it's really cool owning a piece of the past that is anywhere between 50 and 100 million years old. I mean, it's free, it's easily accessible, and it's just cool, so why not do it? Now on the way out, I didn't keep all 94 teeth. I gave as many as I could to some of the kids that were there at the beach with their families, because just seeing an American goldfinch, a common bird, at a nature camp when I was nine is one of the things that got me hooked on the outdoors, just one of those moments. And you never know if I might've done the same to one of those kids today. You never know what's gonna get someone into the outdoors. So hopefully those kids appreciate it. And uh, like I said, this isn't really a skill. It's just something to get out and do for fun. We're about an hour and 15 minutes from DC, so it's easily accessible. And uh, hopefully you guys will come out here and do it too.